He wants those things to keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up until we finally get so fed up with them that we say, I am not going to go around this mountain one more time. I am not going to spend one more night in the wilderness. God, whatever it takes, I want you to do something in me, not in somebody else, but I want you to do something in me so I can be the stable person that you want me to be. Temptation is a fact of life. It's not about whether you will or won't be tempted. It's when you're tempted. When you're tempted. Not if you're tempted. When you're tempted. And Jesus tells us plainly in his model prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer to pray, lead us not into temptation. He didn't say to pray that you won't be tempted. So just stop doing that. It's a waste of prayer time. The devil's alive and well on planet Earth. And various trials come into our life. Some of them are demonically induced. Some are divinely permitted. And some are just messes we get ourselves into through our own foolishness. Can anybody say amen? amen. But whatever they come for, they're a fact of life. And it's in those trials that we're tempted to do wrong things. Even if, you, even if somebody is addicted to alcohol, the first thing they're going to want to do when they have a, a rough day is have a drink. If I used to be that way when I, when I smoked cigarettes. Every time, I mean, I smoked them all day anyway, but especially if I was having a rough time, then I'd always want a cigarette. You know, we, we lean to our crutches when things become difficult. Well, there's many temptations that we have and many of those temptations for the Christian, you may be beyond stealing and lying and murder and adultery and some of those things, hopefully, prayerfully. If not, you really need to be here, and I'm really glad that you're here. But a lot of our temptation is, you know, we, we don't want to be tempted to be bitter and resentful and jealous and greedy and stingy and selfish and self-centered and full of self-pity. We don't want to be tempted to disobey God and to not care about other people and to not be part of relieving the injustices around the world. The greatest temptation that we will ever have is to be selfish and self-centered and not care about anybody else except our own self. Can I get a good amen this morning? So there's temptation everywhere. It's for sure that Jesus never said to pray that you won't be tempted. He said pray that you won't come into temptation. In Luke 22 and verse 40 and 46, we see the same thing when he was in his greatest hour of temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane, being very tempted to run away from the will of God. God, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. He did not want to go through that. It was unbelievably painful, but he prayed through. And he turned to his disciples and he said, wake up and pray that you come not into temptation. He didn't say pray you won't be tempted. He said you're going to get tempted. So pray that you won't come into it. And I am going to say that over and over this weekend because I believe that is something that we don't do. I don't think we pray ahead of time enough about the areas in our lives that are weaknesses. One of the reasons why we don't is because we don't ever take the trouble to know ourselves. How well do you know yourself? If I said to you, what are your top five weaknesses? You should be able to rattle them off just like that. Not because you sit around and think about what's wrong with you all the time. I don't encourage that. But we need to know the areas where we're weak. Because if we don't know the areas where we're weak, then the enemy is going to deceive us because I can tell you right now that he knows the areas where you're weak. And I always say the devil sets us up. He baits us and arranges circumstances sometimes and situations that are going to push our buttons. And sometimes, many times, God does not remove those things from our life when we'd like Him to because He wants those things to keep coming up and keep coming up and keep coming up until we finally get so fed up with them that we say, I am not going to go around this mountain one more time. I am not going to spend one more night in the wilderness. God, whatever it takes, I want you to do something in me, not in somebody else, but I want you to do something in me so I can be the stable person that you want me to be. Amen.
So know yourself. Some people have quick tempers. If you do, then you need to be honest about that. God, I have a really quick temper. A lot of things make me mad a lot quicker than they should. You need to say to the Lord real openly, and I don't want to stay like this. Well, God will help you if you want him to. You'll need to study in that area. It's not going to do you any good to listen to a teaching tape on prosperity if you've got a bad temper. <laughs> Did you hear me? You don't need to get the book on six steps to success if you've got a lousy temper and you're full of all kinds of unforgiveness and bitterness from the past. I have a lot greater weakness with impatience than I do with unforgiveness. I've studied unforgiveness and studied it and studied it till I'm just plain afraid to have unforgiveness in my heart. I know the danger of it. I know it's going to hinder my prayers. I know it's not pleasing to God. I know it messes with the anointing on my life. And I will just do anything to get unforgiveness out of my heart. Impatience is probably one of the, the greatest weaknesses of the type A personality. And I have come a long, 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 long way. But I know if enough of my buttons get pushed, that's still going to be an area where I might get upset. And so I pray about that. I pray about things that I know are weaknesses for me. It could be anger for you. It could be self-pity. It could be a temptation to control every situation. We have any people like that? Yeah. <laughs> Can be some kind of addiction. Just saying stupid stuff, idle words. Just <laughs> being a rescuer, always wanting to rescue other people. Amen. And it's really bad when we spend our life trying to rescue somebody that don't want to be rescued. And matter of fact, refuses to be rescued. Judging, expressing opinions that nobody cares about, on and on and on and on. Sexual lust, the list gets long. Well, I want to talk about five ways to overcome, five ways to win over temptation. We'd like to look at Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And the first way to overcome temptation is to be wise. Don't be foolish, be wise. And I could give you a lot of fancy definitions for wisdom, but I personally believe that wisdom is doing now what you're going to be satisfied with later on. There are many people here today who have all kinds of issues in your life that leave you disappointed and uh, wishing that you would have made other choices. So we have to learn from our bad choices and our lack of wisdom not to keep going around and around that same mountain all over again. We have to think. We have to think about what we're doing, when we're doing it, and say, what is going to be the result? See, I've even learned, like, you know, my situation in my marriage. I mean, I have a great situation, but, you know, I mean, I'm you know, my gift is in my mouth. Well, sometimes when your gift is in your mouth, it's, it works when you, it don't need to work. <laughs> How many of you know that? And I talk for a living, and so, you know, sometimes I have a more difficult time being quiet. But I've learned and learned that I can overcome those things if I think a little bit. If I think. Now, I really want to tell Dave. Da -da 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 but what's going to be the result if I do? Well, see, years ago, I didn't think about the result. I just boom, did what I felt like. How many of you ladies understand? A, <laughs> say you're with me. <laughs> there it comes. Well, let me just tell you what I think. Then everybody's mad for two or three days, and you're crying, and the kids are upset. And why? Just because you said what you wanted to say. We can win over temptation through being wise. Wisdom is common sense. It's just thinking about what you're doing. You know, if you spend more than you make, you're going to have problems. If you eat more calories than you're burning off, you're going to gain weight. <laughs> Proverbs 5, 1 and 2. My son, be attentive to my wisdom, godly wisdom, Learn by actual and costly experience. You know, we learn wisdom by going through things and doing dumb stuff and then realizing, well, this didn't get me a very good result. 
So maybe I'll do it another way. How many of you have lived long enough now that you've had some experiences? All right. Well, then why do we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over thinking we're going to get a different result? Lack of wisdom. And incline your ear to my understanding and what is becoming and prudent for you. Verse 2. That you may exercise proper discrimination and discretion and that your lips may guard and keep knowledge and the wise answer to temptation. So temptation is going to come and he's saying when it comes then you need to be ready with a wise answer. And you know what the wisest answer is to temptation? It's so simple. Two little letters. No. Only this side of the room knows how to say that. <laughs> Come on, all the way up on the top. No. No. You got to start talking back to the devil. When he starts filling your mind full of junk, just say, shut up. No. I did that this morning, combing my hair, and all of a sudden it's got this. I just said, no. Shut up. I don't want to hear that stuff. Do now what you'll be happy with later. What's going to be the result if you cave in to your temptation one more time? That means that you're still going to have to face it and deal with it the next time. You either deal with it now or you deal with it later, but you will deal with it. I like the way Dave says it. He says, you will either make yourself accountable or you will be made accountable by your circumstances. Hello. We either make ourselves accountable to manage our money properly and not spend more than we make and not waste it, or sooner or later we'll, we will be made accountable by the debt collectors. We either take care of ourselves now and we eat decent food, right portions, we realize that we have all these joints in our body because that means movement. And so we get a little exercise, we walk, we make sure that we're not just too immobile. We do some things to take care of ourselves. And if we don't, then disease will hold us accountable at some time later on in our life. You know, how, how many of you guys hope when you're 70 you look as good as my husband does? All right. Now. He doesn't look that good just because God favored him and blessed him tremendously. He's been working out three and four times a week for 50 years. So it's not going to do any good to say, well, man, I wish I looked like that. We don't need wishbone. We need the courage to stand up and do what we need to do. So we're going to be happy with the results later on. Wisdom leads to promotion. Wisdom leads to riches and honor. Wisdom leads to respect, to peace. Many times when I choose wisdom to not say something that I know would start a problem with somebody, then I reap peace. Where if I go ahead and just do what I feel like doing, even though I know it's not the smartest decision, then I'm going to be miserable. Wisdom brings a harvest of righteousness in your life. I believe when we do the right thing, it is such a good choice for many reasons, but one of, the, one of them is when you do the right thing, you don't have to go through the whole guilty thing. And I'm telling you that doing the wrong thing, caving into that temptation and doing the wrong thing is always followed by guilt. And that is just a power drainer. Anytime you have to spend a half a day, a day, two days, three days feeling guilty, all it does is drain your power and keep you don't you hate that feeling that, well, I wish I wouldn't have, I wish I would have. So let's start doing what's right now. The second thing that we can do that will help us overcome temptation is to believe that we can resist temptation. Now this is simple, but I think a lot of times people look at problems in their life and they think, well, I just really hope that doesn't happen because when that happens, I always fall apart. Well, I just really hope that there's no dessert there because if there is, I cannot resist eating it. <laughs> I mean, I hear people say this. I cannot just eat one cookie. I have to eat a dozen. Well, you know what? I don't mean to be rude, but that's just silly. <laughs> I mean, you are born again. 
baptized in the Holy Ghost, full of the God who created the universe, and you're telling me that a cookie is bossing you around? <laughs> and I used to be like that, but I've learned that the words of my mouth are so important. Stop saying that you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. Stop saying, I just can't resist this. I can't control myself. I'm just not organized. I have no discipline in this area. Every time you do that, you're putting another nail in your own coffin and just spending one more night in the wilderness going around the same mountain again. You start believing that you can resist temptation. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For no temptation, no temptation. That's your temptation, my temptation, anybody's temptation. No temptation, no trial regarded as something that would entice us to sin. No matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. Now, that simply means everybody gets tempted. Everybody out there has to learn the same lesson that we all get tempted. Let's put it back up, please. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance. No. It doesn't say, except a plate of cookies. <laughs> but when I go out shopping, I just, I know that I don't, shouldn't spend money, but I just get so tempted and I just can't resist it. Yes, you can. Because God's given you a spirit of discipline and self-control. Let's see the rest of it. So no temp temptation has come to us that is beyond human resistance that, and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience. And such as man can bear. Stop saying I can't stand this and say I can bear this. I can endure this. I can be consistent. I can be steadfast. Because why? The greater one lives in me. I don't know about you, but many years ago I got tired of singing the songs and then not putting them to work in my life. We don't need to sing, I'm more than a conqueror one more time if we're going to be defeated by a credit card or a chocolate chip cookie or a piece of pie or something like that. I'm preaching better than you're acting. When you wake up in the morning and you, you know that you know that you know that you know that you need to get your house cleaned up, or you need to, if you're a guy, you need to get that lawn mowed, get that garage cleaned out. Sit down, balance your bank account, because you have no idea what's in it. It's no wonder you got checks bouncing all the time. But you... Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Oh, God, I don't know why I feel so bad today. Well, I know I did eat a dozen cookies, but I just can't help myself. You know how those cookies tempt me, God, please. Oh, the house, yeah, the house. Oh, God, I'm sorry, but I just can't do that today. I think I'm going to pray for a housekeeper. That sounds like a better idea. <laughs> and then come to a service. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, if it's not working at home, honey, it ain't working. If it's not working on the job, it ain't working. Quit being a Monday morning, a Sunday morning warrior and a Monday morning whiner. The next thing you can do to defeat temptation is to be prepared. You're going to have to spend time with God if you want to walk through this world and not have the thing chew you up. You're going to have to know God. 
know God. No wonder Paul said, my determined purpose is that I may know Him. Not know about Him through somebody else, but know Him personally for yourself, that I may know Him. Now, you know, I'm really glad that you came to this conference, but I'd be even happier if you would, all those notes that you're taking, if you'd go home now and take every day next week and maybe take a half an hour or an hour and you would study these notes and go over them and look up the Scriptures and think about what we said and have a meeting with yourself. And say, now I need to get to know myself, Lord, so it's time for me to begin to learn what, what all the stupid stuff is that the devil uses to steal my joy. And what it is that he uses to steal my peace. Because I am not going to live like this anymore. I am not just going to go hear the sermons and go home and be no different. You don't change because you come and hear somebody else preach. You change because you apply it to your life, and you get to know God, and you study your Bible, and you take your time, and you spend time with God. I got up this morning, and I spent two hours with God. Well, that's not going to help you if you don't get up and spend time with God. And see, there was probably even in, man, I don't want to make anybody feel bad because I'm so glad you're here, but I bet you there was a whole lot of people that got up this morning and you thought, well, I'll probably spend a little time with God. Oh, I don't need to do that. I'm going to go hear Joyce today. <laughs> I don't replace your time with God. My TV program in the morning is not a replacement for God in your life. Don't put that on me. I don't want that responsibility. I'm trying to lead you to God, not away from Him. I'm glad you watch my program in the morning. Get up, take a little bit of time, pray that what you hear you're going to understand. And I don't know what she's going to say today, Lord, but I want to be able to apply it to my life because I believe it's your word. Listen to what I say. Then when you go to lunch with somebody, instead of gossiping about the boss and everything you don't like at work, why don't you find another believer and discuss what I taught about that morning? This is how you do spiritual warfare. Be prepared. What about the ten foolish virgins versus the ten wise virgins in Matthew 25? Ten were foolish, ten were wise. The wise ones were prepared. They got extra oil just in case they had to wait for the bridegroom a little bit longer than they thought that they might. They were prepared that their lamps were not going to go out. But the foolish didn't want to do anything extra. Sure enough, the bridegroom came, and they turned to the wise and said, well, give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. And that's the story of the universe. You do it for me, because it's just too hard for poor little pitiful me. That's all right. I'm having fun anyway. <laughs> Avoid the very scenes of temptation. That's another thing that you can do that will really, really help you. The first thing that we talked about was, see if anybody remembers? Wisdom. Wisdom. All right. The second thing, believe that you can resist. The third thing, be prepared ahead of time. The next thing, avoid the very scenes of temptation. Now, I don't even know how to tell you how important it is who you hang out with, who you become intimately involved with, who you listen to, what you watch, what you hear, the kind of books and magazines that you look at. Now, you know, this is not rocket science. If you're a man and you're having trouble with pornography, and the magazine that your wife gets for ladies' underwear shows up, you don't need to sneak it in your lunch pail. <laughs> now, you know, I don't know how to do this other than to just be honest, you know? I mean, I'm a woman and I throw a lot of that stuff away when it comes to my house because I didn't order a magazine to have half-naked women laying on my counter. 
That's not what I want. Well, it's just a magazine. Well, do you want your sons, your daughters looking at that? We have to start fighting for ourselves. And I'm not talking about being a religious prude where you feel like you can never, you know, see, you know. We don't need to be like the Pharisees who put things over their eyes lest they see a woman and get into sin. You know? That's not what I'm talking about. But I am saying that we need to be careful who we spend time with. 